Well, greetings in YouTube land. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to build a bleeder resistor uh, to discharge capacitors when I'm working on amplifiers. So I've been looking online. I often use YouTube um, as a resource. There's lots of really good people with good information out there. And there's a chap called Blue Glow Electronics that built pretty much what I'm going to build here. Um, and he based it, I think, off somebody else whose name escapes me. But essentially what I'm doing is sort of passing the word around because there seems to be a, a good way to do it. The first thing I did was I got a 5mm piece of brass rod and I took it into the garage and I just, at an angle like this, I just applied it very gently to um, a grinding wheel. If that's the grinding wheel, I sort of came in at an angle and just turned it as I was applying it and slowly you just um, grind down what is a nice point effectively. So I'll be using a resistor this is a 10 watt cement type resistor 100 ohms. So I cut this to length I use this tool here it's like a small pair of bolt cutters um, it's made by a company called Hamasa Hamasa Tools it's a Japanese um, Japanese device. It's pretty good actually. I mean, it will cut through this very easily. I'll show you how it works. I hope it, this doesn't go flying. So that's 5mm brass. It went through it very easily. So when I cut through it, um, I put this up against the grinding wheel thusly and then came in just very gently just to take the burr off the edge. I'm just going to scuff up the bar at the point where I'm going to be soldering that'll help the solder and heat shrink stick now I'm going to figure out where to put this I'm thinking about here okay, it'll be fine and that'll give me a little bit of space to join the wire and then I can heat shrink it to the bar here. I'm setting this up so that it lays on the capacitor nice and straight. Um, I've wrapped this around here as tight as I can make it and centered it. Now I'm taking my soldering iron and some solder up here. I'm going to try to solder this the brass bar so I'm going to put this on a little bit of solder to help dissipate the heat and put this on the bar There we go. So I'm on the other side of the wire now and this solder is melting. Okay, I'm happy with that. So the next thing I'm going to do is to attach this wire here to that, to the other end. So I need to snip this off. So I can pull the sleeve off. wire is very very thin. I'm going to put a piece of tape I just want to 
make sure this doesn't move around too much. Do any damage. Okay, I'll stop that from moving. So let's pull the towel for a little ways. Alright, so I put a couple of shrink wrap on the uh, little clip here and I'm going to heat this up, solder it in place. Okay, so the wire is soldered to the resistor. I'm just going to straighten this out a little bit. And then in order to secure this end here, which could break off, I'm going to slide this over. down nicely. And I have another one here which I'm going to slide over. Let's give it one more time. So when that cools, that should be um, nice and firm. So I'm putting some covering over the front, the probe end. I'm overlapping each one just a little. So that nothing is exposed. We don't want the metal to be exposed in any way. Oops, that went out. Go over it once more, make sure it's good and tight. It's nice and neat. It's three pieces, but it looks okay. The overlap is the same. I think that will do. And now um, I want something to hold these two together. So I've, I've elected this. Oops. I would have liked something a bit smaller to be honest, but unfortunately I'd already put this clip on. In fact, what I'm going to do, I've had a thought, I'm going to take... Um, this one here would be a better fit, so I'm going to cut this off because this has only been crimped to the clip and I'd rather that this was uh, soldered, I think it would make a better connection. So while I'm at it, I'll cut this off, remove the boots, remove this and put the smaller piece on. Slide that over these two, like so, and that should pinch this all together. The end of the bar is about here, so this should give a little bit of um, support. I think it might be a bit long actually. I'm going to just trim this just a little bit. So I want as much available wire as I can have. Don't want it to be too short. Okay, so I'm going to see if that works. Seems to be shrinking down. This is a sort of a two to one shrink apparently. pretty much the finished product on this side. Okay, 
So what I want to do is to glue along both sides with a glue gun just to give a little bit more support, a little bit more adhesion so that this capacitor is more or less stuck or bonded uh, to, the, to the brass rod. So I have my hot glue gun. I'm just going to run a bead of glue along the side here. Let that dry. Do the same on this side. Okay. Now this clip needs to be opened up so that I can remove the wire. I'm going to see if I can pull it out first of all. fairly easily. I'm just going to sand the back of the crocodile clip. Now there's a small hole there so what I'm going to do is to push the wire through the hole. I've opened up these little prongs that grip the wire so with the wire in place just going to close these up a bit just to hold it in place It's not piercing the wire but it's wrapping around it, it's just to stop it from, from pulling out. And then on the other side I have the wire coming through the hole which I'm going to solder to the metal work of the clip. And I'm going to try to heat this clip up as much as possible and get a connection. Oh, I moved it. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so it's well soldered on the back. Okay, so here we go. I thought what I'd do is just to smooth out these ends here, I'll wrap it with some tape. I think it'll be a good place to start. I'll just smooth it all out a little bit more. It'll also act as an extra layer of insulation. layer of insulation plus the stuff that's going over it, the tube shrink. Just go around there a few times and try to bridge back back and forth a few times. 
There we go. Probably best to cut it. Okay. Just to finish it off, I'm going to slide this last little piece on. It's already quite a tight fit, which is probably a good thing, assuming I can get it to go on. Starting to bind a bit. There we go. I'd like to cover the red tape if possible. Yeah. Not sure exactly how much it will shrink this one, but we'll do our best. nice one so far. It's this end, I'm not sure if it's going to shrink all the way. Okay, I assume there's a limit to how much it's going to shrink. This is two to one. Uh, it's the only stuff I had. They do make um, shrink wrap that shrinks more. I'll give this a little bit more heat in the front. I hope it might shrink a little more. Not sure it will, to be honest. I don't think it matters that much. The most important thing, although aesthetically I think this, is, this has turned out to be quite nice, um, the most important thing here is the insulation. It won't matter how aesthetically pleasing it is if you get a terrible shock. So my advice is to make it, um, take you half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, the rod cost me, I think it was about uh, almost three pounds. It wasn't particularly cheap and the capacitor was um, a couple of pounds. So I think it's cost me about five pounds to make and if that saves me getting a terrible shock, that's five pounds well invested as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I hope this was useful. As I said, I'm not the first person to build it. Um, I did this my way, obviously, with the, with the glue and different kinds of shrink wrap and double insulating and all that sort of thing. Um, but the idea came from Blue Glow Electronics, and I think he got it from someone else, another YouTuber. So thanks to those guys, and um, I hope this is useful to you. Please subscribe for more future projects, more and repair and other things that I get up to. And stay safe. See you soon. Bye.